for the next 30 minutes, Dr. Steve Machenik's our guest. Then we'll go to Darlene, James, Eddie, Dennis, Terrence, and others that are patiently holding. Dr. Steve Pachinik, I headed up psychological warfare operations for the State Department, worked with the CIA, Pentagon, helped found Delta Force with General Boykin. He's been a frequent guest here over the years. He first came out and said that bin Laden was dead in 2002 on my show, later came out on CBS News, what he talked about at the American Hospital. He predicted they had him on ice when rolling him out somewhere in the future for political gain. Now Cy Hirsch has come out saying the entire bin Laden killing story was a fraud. And I've had Navy SEALs families on that died who were part of all that, saying it was a total fraud and it was a bin Laden double is what the SEALs have told them at that house. So it was a real firefight, but it was all staged. That's why they had to later kill most of that team that were witnesses to that and court martial almost everybody on the ship that saw that nobody was dumped overboard. It's just all a total hoax. People say, well, if that happened, folks would talk. They did talk. So Pachenik's given us a lot of key intel. He co-wrote a bunch of books with Tom Clancy as well, produced Hollywood movies. I want to get into his view on what's happening with ISIS, IS, all these different operations around the world, what's happening with Russia right now. But, but Steve, here's my issue, Dr. Pachenik. He's also a medical doctor and a psychiatrist. Separate from, I get the geopolitical breakup of these countries, but who runs our country are people targeting the Tea Party and targeting gun owners and setting up regular army for domestic operations and imploding the border and bringing in unlimited illegals and shutting down our power plants. I see the political elite energetically trying to sabotage this country and only promote uh, different combines that are part really of the Democratic Party in my view. And I know you're nonpartisan. I don't like the Republican leadership either. Politically, because you've been part of the CFR, you name it in the past, you resigned out of it. What, Council on Foreign Relations. What do you think of Obama and this political elite and what they're doing domestically so we can then move to the international level? Dr. Pachenik, thanks for joining us. Well, I think Obama is not a tutored individual in terms of domestic concerns. I think he has a staff that has not been performing very well. But to attribute a lot of nefarious deeds, and you know I've criticized Obama from the beginning with Newtown and Eric Holder and all that, I think we have to understand that there is a political elite, but it's really diverse. It goes from Silicon Valley to businessmen. It goes from the right wing to the left wing. So we're too big a country to be contained or suppressed. You know, I've said it from 9-11 that eventually the American public would understand what happened in 9-11. Bush and Cheney and the neocons would pay the price, and they are. We went from zero people understanding it to over 60% of the country in 13 years. Thanks to you, Alex, and the people in the alternative media, we got the truth out. The reality of the truth now is that FEMA is not as effective as they are. Obamacare is not going to work that effectively. A lot of the things that they've targeted has been overblown. But the reality of America is that we are very incredibly powerful as an entity. The people itself, we're diversified. We're located over a huge uh, geographic expanse. We're multivariate. We contain over 100 different ethnic groups. And so it's very hard to begin to understand that Washington is becoming less and less relevant. What's becoming more relevant domestically, and this is what the American public has to understand through the Alex Jones Show, is the governors. And the Congress understands this. That's why congressmen are leaving, senators are leaving, even big business is leaving, because they have to devolve their power to the state level. The states are becoming incredibly more powerful. If the American public wants to be effective, they have to work for their governors, their local commissioners, their ward captains. That's where politics has been going. And I'm not concerned about the federal government at the local level or domestic what I am concerned, and I think this is fair because everybody understood that I have criticized Obama domestically in foreign policy, but this fast weekend has been an amazing turnaround in the Obama administration where he has to receive credit, at least from somebody like me who's worked for both Republicans and Democrats. And what happened, even with the Malaysian airline and the war in Gaza by the Israelis, is that Obama quietly allied himself with Iran. Now, that's 35 years that I've been waiting since I was involved in the Iran hostage siege, where Jimmy Carter lost it, 
and we lost the embassy, we lost the Iranian influence. But in the meantime, Iran has been helping U.S. military forces for the past 10 years to assist us in Iraq and to assist us in Afghanistan. And more importantly, Iran has assisted us in evacuating from Iraq and Afghanistan. And quietly, Obama and the administration has recognized that fact and understand very well that Iran will be the dominant Middle Eastern power for the Shiites, and Turkey will be the dominant uh, Middle East power for the Sunnis. Israel has become a strategic liability, as General Petraeus said two years ago, and it's evidencing it now with Hamas, which is not a war of terror. It is a major invasion into Gaza, and they have a major problem with not only Hamas, which they, by the way, created 25 years ago, they funded it, and they have all the Palestinian operatives who are in their prison, and they know that they've doubled them up. But they also know that the Hezbollah is in the north in Lebanon, also funded by Iran. Israel failed in their intelligence. They knew very well the intelligence that the arms were coming from Iran to Sudan, Sudan, Egypt, Egypt to Gaza. They waited. They had a year's worth of assessments on the tunnels. They knew the tunnels, but they didn't have a good assessment of the fighting capacity of Hamas, which turned out not to be terrorists, but insurgents who were fully armed, fully disciplined, extremely well organized, well armed, and Israel failed. And the reason it is failing is because every time an Israeli soldier dies, and this is not what I wish for, and I warn them, don't do this, it is equal to 30 American soldiers. So basically, 30 Israeli elite units of the Galani unit have died. That's 900 Special Forces American soldiers who have died in less than a week. That is not tenable for Israel. It's not tenable for the political legitimacy of the state, and Bibi has failed. He has failed in the same way historically that Moshe Dayan understood. You have to make concessions. Even his mentor, Sharon, who didn't like Bibi and detested him and was far a greater military hero, said, we have to pull out of Gaza. And in the same way that he failed when he invaded into Lebanon in 2006 and Hezbollah, with 800 soldiers, was able to decimate thousands of Israeli soldiers. Dr. Pachenik, can I just add a point here? You know, I'm neutral on this. I understand it's a very diverse tribal warfare situation over there, and there's a lot of vitriol on both sides. But when I see the kind of Benjamin Netanyahu uh, think tank groups attacking anybody, including Jews, who have any opinion on Israel outside of theirs, uh, it concerns me because I don't have any ill will towards Israel. Israel's not going anywhere, has upwards of 800 nuclear weapons, high tech. And as you know, uh, you know, the globalists are playing a double game with the Palestinians manipulating things for whatever strategy of tension. But when you start seeing Israeli professors in the news and Israelis cheering dead kids and, you know, saying, hey, let's rape Palestinian women, it's all and, and these are real Israelis, not Palestinian operatives. If I was a Palestinian operative, I would pose as Jews and say these horrible things, losing a propaganda war. And that's what concerns me because I don't want nuclear war. And Israel, more and more, the leadership is taking on a stubborn, obstinate, invincibility attitude of we'll do whatever we want. And it really concerns me. Correct. And the, and the issue that I said is that they, they have a problem that's basically from immaturity in terms of a country that never developed. I'm a Holocaust Jew. Bibi knows very well that those of us who died in the Holocaust, including the Warsaw Ghetto, would never were co-opted by Zionism. And I grew up in the Betar unit under Zev Jabotinsky, Menachem Begin. This is not the state that was created in terms of Judaism. This is a state that was created by Ben-Gurion in terms of a state of concept called Zionism, which Abbas Hamas understands, the PLO understands, the British understand in America. What's happening now is Israel will lose its credibility as a Jewish state because most of the Jews in America and around the world will not accept the ignominious behavior of the Israelis continuously slaughtering innocent children and women. It's a repetition compulsion that they have been invested in. Now, let me put it in perspective. What you said is correct, Alex. Over the past 30 years, I was involved tangentially in taking down apartheid, but it was taken down by Bush and Baker quietly. 
So blacks in South Africa are in power. We were, I was involved directly in taking down the Soviet Union 30 years ago under Reagan and Baker and Bush. And what happened? We didn't fire a shot. And yet the Soviet Union became Russia, and Russia is growing. We were involved directly under the Bush-Reagan administration and even Carter in allowing China to become an economic force and transforming from communism to basically capitalism. Now, you're telling me in 60 years with the greatest brain power that allegedly we Jews have, we have not been able to get away from this incredible, immature, psychotic pattern of behavior that Israel has to continuously fight against PLO, Hamas, Hezbollah, or any Anybody around them with this paranoid notion that they can't make peace. Yet we've been able, the United States and the Jews in America, as well as Christians and Muslims and others, have been able to uh, incorporate peace all over the world, but not with Israel. So Israel is headed towards self-destruction, and that's really what you're saying. But more importantly, what Israel understands is that as Obama moves to Iran, and by the way, Obama is not anti-Semitic because Rami Emanuel worked in the IDF and his father went into the Agur Tzvei Rami Emanuel, Michelle's cousin, is an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, the first black one. So any notion that he's anti-Semitic is nonsense. But strategically and in terms of tactics, the CIA, our military intelligence, were very effective in making an alliance with Iran we will denuclearize their capability, making an alliance with Turkey, allowing Iraq to become what it should have been. And Biden, by the way, said it correctly years ago. It's a federalized country. That means we are taking apart, we, the United States of America, in its own power, is taking apart what the British and the French did in the sykes picot Treaty of 1917, and that is we're taking apart Syria. Now you're going to have ISIS, which we have funded. That's part of al-Qaeda. And by the way, Bibi Netanyahu has funded uh, the Sunnis as well because he wants to get in there. And so every notion that Bibi is against terrorism is nonsense. Remember, he created Hamas. He's worked with the PLO. He's protected Arafat. And the Israelis have fought against Hezbollah, and now they make peace. So they have to come to peace. Now, the second part is, what countries have lost in all of this? Saudi Arabia, the creation of British intelligence, particularly Gertrude Bell and Lawrence of Arabia. And basically, this is Wahhabism, but it was never an effective country. Under the Soleimani Federation of Seven Sons, they have not been able to grow develop or develop has saudi arabia figured out that large power blocks in the west plan on breaking their country up well they figured it out and they're frightened and what they're doing is helping israel and basically encouraging israel to attack the plo because saudi arabia has never never cared about the palestinians even when i worked on the west bank and i went into the different uh palestinian uh, camps the yeah, Saudis always used it as a pawn. So the hypocrisy of Saudi Arabia and the hypocrisy of setting up al-Qaeda and Haqqani and funding all these right-wing extremist Sunni uh, uh, extremists is coming back to hurt Saudi Arabia. So we have effectively deflected entire al-Qaeda, Haqqani networks against the Saudi Arabian mach uh, machinery and royal house, which is really not an institution. And they will eventually devolve. They will be out of power because the eastern part of Saudi Arabia is run by Shiites. And there, will, there are now conflicts there. And Saudi Arabia understands it. Sure. 40 Couldn't we just see overnight a collapse of Riyadh one day and the princes yes. all in their big 777s running with all their loot yes. to Paris? Yes, they're all in Marbella. They have Swiss bank accounts. They're here in America. They're totally corrupt. They know it, we know it, the world knows it. But they're not a country. They were never a country. They were a centralized point of a very fundamentalist sect that didn't even really relate to the Quran, the Holy Quran, and they were called Wahhabis. And they claimed they were the patrons or the guardians of Mecca, Medina. All right, well, I get breaking up Iraq because it was always in three parts before, but, but, right. but here's my problem. Yes, sir. You don't use Islamic State, a bunch of crazies to do it who are blowing up all the churches. That, that, I mean, that makes the West just proves, it's like using the ring of Mordor. You cannot use the ring and have it turn into good. I, I agree with you. Now, the issue of Christianity is something I brought up on your show three years ago. And I have asked the Coptics to prepare for this. I'd asked the Geneva Convention of Churches to be aware of this. No one stood up to defend the Christians in Syria 
or anywhere else in the Middle East. And I helped to write a book called Out of the Ashes with the last Tom Clancy book, which has to do with the slaughter of the Christians. But that is not an issue of the ISIS. ISIS has been a product of the American, Israeli, and Sunni, Turkish, as well as Saudi Arabian involvement to create a caliphate where they can control some of Syria, break up Iraq, and then eventually they have to come to terms and peace with Jews and Christian minorities, which they're trying to do. I do not defend the caliphate, but basically what's happening is a total reorganization of the Middle East by America and the influence of this president and his vice president, Biden, who was accused by Robert Gates, the director of the CIA, as being stupid, General Stanley McChrystal as being stupid, and, and Petraeus. Yet this is the only man who predicted 10 to 20 years ago that we would have a breakup of Iraq. We were never going to build a nation in Iraq. We were never Sure, going that's to clearly build been the plan, is getting it weak the whole time to do that. I'm and sorry? I mean, clearly the plan has been to get Iraq weak the whole time to do that. It's a, it's a clear program of balkanization. Well, it was after the uh, Bush, Cheney, and the neocons. We wanted to break it up because it had no viability as a centralized organization. Nor All right, I, sir, we've got to go to break. I want to come back and shift gears over to Russia and briefly find out what you think about the whole shoot down of the plane and get your perspective on that. But briefly, what do you think of them refusing to enforce border laws and just opening the border up wide open? I think Obama could use this as a crisis to power grab. No, I don't think so. I don't think well, Obama really needs to have a power grab. He's already been in an executive expansion without a power grab. Basically, I always believe that these children should be brought back to their home country. The real culprit in this is Mexico. Mexico should never have allowed them a transit point because if I want to go into Mexico and become a Mexican citizen, it's almost impossible for them. No, I know. So why is Mexico doing that? Because Mexico wants to put pressure on our borders for them to get more money for us to help them out financially. No, that's it. They've been demanding a Marshall Plan, so they're holding us ransom. Correct. Yeah, and it's just all right there. Well, I can't argue with any of that. Well, it's money. Yeah. Alex, it's always follow the money. Cold, hard analysis with Steve Pachinik, a real spy master, on the phone with us, whether you agree with him or disagree. It's definitely interesting to get his perspective. Uh, we'll be right back to get his take on MH17, where it's all going with Putin and more. Then your phone calls and another guest straight ahead on this Thursday Live Edition. Infidelbodyarmor.com or 888-608-6605. 20% off or $20 off, enter code ALEX at checkout and receive free shipping on orders over $100 and $20 off with the code ALEX at infidelbodyarmor.com or 888-608-6605. Going back to Dr. Steve Pachinik, thank you for giving us the perspective of what the establishment thinks they're doing with this. And I can agree with what you're saying because we can see it unfolding and see what the think tanks are saying piecemeal, putting it together. Uh, but specifically with Russia and what's happening there uh, and, and, and George Soros and the rest of it over there, what do you think about what happened with MH17? Uh, well, I think MH, you know, first you have to remember, Malaysia is a, what I call a pimp country. It is run by the Genting Group, which is huge investments in the United States. Again, it's money issues. They run the casinos in Miami, Pennsylvania, New York. They run the cruise ships, the Norwegian cruise ship, the Bimini line, they, they, they came out of the drug smuggling business. They're still a very, very nefarious country, which will do anything for money and will, will work with us or anybody else. So the issue of a downplaying is not as significant to me as the issue of what it means in terms of the United States and Russia. What, again, I hate to say this, but what Obama did on behalf of this administration was to create economic sanctions. Now, I agree with that because we don't need to go to war. Our country is tired of sending boys to Iraq and Afghanistan thanks to Bush and Cheney, who never went to war. But instead, we did something much more effective. We lowered the ruble. We forced an economic uh, uh, flood of money out of close to $100 billion of uh, uh, investment money out of Russia. We forced the, the indices of the market to go down. The Russians are hurting economically. They will hurt economically. And the reason we can do this is because they, the only product they can sell on the open market is $100 a, a, a barrel of oil. Now, having done that, what happens is Putin has been put up there 
by the CIA and other intelligence units. You've got to understand, nothing happens in Russia or the world without our CIA and our intelligence community helping to put it there. And in the respect, we want Putin out. And what's happening is three divisions of his intelligence service, that's the FSB, which he was head of the KGB, and the SVR, which is their foreign intelligence, plus the GRU, their military intelligence, has been fighting over the fact that Putin has not been able to economically maintain a stability in Russia. And in turn, they're the ones who deal with the economic fallout because they're the ones who do anti-corruption work, but they are involved in corruption. And in turn, they're fighting among each other. And what you saw in the Ukraine was the GRU, FSB, fighting among them, each other. It's very much like our military intelligence fights with the CIA, but much more lethal because the head of that is Putin. And Putin is hurting because we forced him to stretch out all the way into Ukraine. Remember, the Ukraine in and of itself has no basic value to us. In terms of strategic force structure, it really doesn't impact on Europe. So it's a proxy war like Afghanistan. Well, it's even less than that because it, uh, Afghanistan was totally desolate. Here we have a $15 billion liability. In other words, the minute we pick up the Ukraine, despite what everybody says, we have a dead asset that is not worth $15 billion. But we have Well, you can cut off Russian gas and then make them buy it from the U.S. Well, we can do that, but that would be Cozabella. But we don't need... Tell you what, Doc, do five more minutes with us, and I promise callers I'll get to you as well. You'll just be on with Professor Hamamoto. Darlene, Terrence, James, Dennis, Eddie, I'm going to get to all of you. So stay with us. Dr. Pachinik, stay there back in 60 seconds. We've got photos up on Infowars.com taken by astronauts of rockets and explosions. Photos of it taken from space. Pretty chilling. Dr. C. Pachinik's our guest. Your calls are coming up. Uh, Doc, finishing up with what's happening with Putin. I mean, I know that there were deals with Yeltsin for the so-called collapse of the Soviet Union. I know that there were deals with Putin early on. But then he went after a bunch of the oligarchs, uh, European oligarchs and others. And my whole issue is I don't really see Russia trying to expand anywhere. And, and, I, and I don't want a unipolar world. Uh, I mean, I want to see sovereign nations out there operating off their trade. I don't like communist China. That's who I really see as being uh, just nightmarishly oppressive. I get they've got a huge population, but... I mean, are you endorsing the toppling of Putin and putting something else in? Yes. I think it's time for Putin to leave, but I don't have to endorse anything. Basically, what's happening is Putin has spent 14 years in the Soviet and Russian uh, unit. He was trained by Marcus Wolf. By the way, he was a Jewish uh, uh, spy master who was appointed by Stalin and, and Marcus Wolf. And, he was the head of the Stasi. He was head of Stasi, but also, you have to understand, uh, Putin was really trained by Stasi in East Germany. That's why he and Merkel really get along very well. But Putin has no strategic sense, and he is becoming too uh, counterproductive to really world trade. And what we're interested in, and quite frankly, America's not interested in war. We're interested in world trade. And as you said, China is expanding very quickly. They're expanding in the Indian Ocean, the Middle East, and Africa, and world trade. And we want to compete with that. Hey, hey, by the way, sometime I'll tell the whole audience a story. One time they said they wanted me on, like, Interfax, National Russian Television. And when they punched up the Skype for the interview, the video feed, was this big, giant government hall. And all these, like, obvious FSB people, but like the brain bugs, not like the knuckle draggers, all, like, interrogating me. It wasn't for TV, asking about you and why you came on my show. And I said, I don't know. But then they started getting real paranoid, thinking I was an Asian or something. What do you want to say to them? Oh, I don't want to say anything. I, I want to say, it <laughs> means all the best to you. You know what you have to do. You take out Putin, and the rest is you want your money, and you want to be able to come to the United States. You want to be able to come to Switzerland and Europe. So get rid of Putin. That's it. It's well, that was a couple of years ago that happened, but it was really weird. Yeah, it continues. Alex, it's always continuing. Russia, since Catherine the Great, has always been an internal uh, turmoil. And remember, the Soviet Union was 122 countries. Russian Federation is 11 time zones right now. It is huge. And Putin can't control it. I mean, it, economically, it has to develop beyond oil and gas, and it can't. The yeah, but the Russians like a strong man, and he makes them feel good. All the polls show that. Well, that's 
up till now, until they get very hungry and they realize that they don't have the Germans coming in for technology. They don't have the American investments on technology to extract the oil out of the Barents Straits, and they don't have their access points out of the Crimea. Now, the one thing we did agree to when the takedown of the Soviet Union is that Crimea belongs to the Russia. And we never argued over that point. And they knew that. The Russians know that. Unfortunately, we should never have ever made Crimea a point because that's their only exit point for their... Well, no, it's meant to force them into a larger conflict. That's correct. It was agitation propaganda. Rightfully or wrongfully, our CIA effectively created agitprop and economic... Uh, well, here's the deal. I don't like the government agitpropping my guns, my property, or my children. And that's why I don't like the people running this country. And that's why, I, you know, I just don't support anything they're up to. Well, remember, we're a democracy and we were based on a revolution, Alex. That revolution is always innate in our, in our genetic... I agree. We should take the country back. Well, we are taking it back. As I said to you, the devolution of power is negating the two parties. We don't need the Democrats and we don't need the Republicans. And quite frankly, we don't well, need the president. This has been one of our best talks. Thank you, Dr. Steve Pachinik. Hope you're having a nice week. Uh, StevePachinik.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll talk to you again soon. All right, we got Professor Hamamoto coming up. And if the callers want to hold, I promise I'll get to you. Stay with us.